You're listening to the Balanced Educator Podcast, episode number 139. Welcome to the Balanced Educator. We're your hosts, Kaylee and Josiane from EduCalm. Our intention is to equip and empower you to feel more calm, balanced, and joyful in all aspects of your life. Hello there and welcome! We are so excited to have you here with us today. So in today's episode, we are diving into part two of a topic we love to talk about, which is how to teach self-regulation in the classroom. Last episode, we talked about how to teach self-awareness and self-regulation, which in turn makes classroom management easier and allows us to be more productive in the classroom. So if you haven't listened to that one yet, we highly encourage you to go back to episode 138 to listen to it before diving into this episode, because that really gives you the foundation that we're going to build on in the episode today. So today, we're going to give you a step-by-step roadmap that you can follow to teach self-regulation to your students using the EduCalm method. We'll give you concrete ideas to implement in your classroom right away. But before we get into this episode, we're excited to share this week's sponsor, which is EduCalm Classroom. This year is our opportunity to equip our students and ourselves with the tools we all need to be resilient, to have a growth mindset, to have breathing strategies for stressful situations, and to spread kindness and compassion. The thing is, with so much on our plates this year, we need resources that are simple, ready to use, and save us time and energy. Luckily, Educom Classroom checks off all those boxes. Educom Classroom is the social-emotional learning program that gives you a ready-to-use mindfulness lesson for every day of the school year. All you have to do is press play and enjoy five minutes of calm with your K-12 students. In English or en français. Once you've listened to the daily audio, you and your students will both feel ready for a productive school day. Think you don't have time to invest in social emotional learning? Think again. Teachers that use Educom Classroom report that they gain instruction and prep time back. Brandy, a grade two teacher, told us, we invest in this time and got it back tenfold. Emily Lee told us, my students are better able to focus and learn in the mornings after our practice, which means less classroom management for me. Whether you're back in the classroom with your students this year or doing remote teaching, Educom Classroom is the resource that you can depend on to help your students feel calm, focused, and ready to learn. Sign up for Educom Classroom now by going to www.educalm.com. Plus, we want to help you feel completely confident using Educom Classroom to support mental health and well-being this year. So, when you sign up for Educom Classroom before October 31st, 2021, we'll send you our Educom Classroom Level 1 online training, a $99 value, for free. You can watch this training video from the comfort of your own home or classroom and feel totally confident using Educom Classroom with your students. What are you waiting for? Make this the year you prioritize student well-being as the foundation for calm and focused learning. Sign up for your Educom Classroom membership today at www.educalm.com. That's spelled E-D-U-C-A-L-M-E dot com. All right, let's get into today's episode. It's so exciting. How many episodes have we done together recently? It's, so, I love these conversations. So fun. Well, we can finally record in a room together. It's wild. I never it thought. It felt like that was never going to happen. Yep. And I never thought I'd be so appreciative of sitting across from you and actually speaking to you in person with our microphones here, catching the conversation. Amazing. So amazing. <laughs> So today, like you said in the intro, we are talking about a topic that we love, that self-regulation, the most important piece to a smooth running classroom. And a smooth running life. Yeah. No kidding. (laughs) Right? Yes. So just before we like get into the next steps, so today the idea is that we're going to get into like the step-by-step of how to teach self-regulation, which we started with last time, but we're going to get into like the 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 part where when the emotions do come up what do we do as the teacher how do we guide our students 
And we will get into like other kind of, um, we talked about the clouds in the sky last time and we'll give more examples of that so that we can play with, you know, different ways of getting students to experience their emotions. So we'll get into all of that, but just before we do, can you just redefine both self-awareness and self-regulation and why self-awareness is important for self-regulation or the first step. Yeah. So as you said, self-awareness is actually the first step to self-regulation. So when we're talking about self-regulation, we're talking about recognizing the emotions that we're feeling and then having strategies that we can implement to regulate those emotions based on what situation we're in. So it's kind of like, a way to adjust our actions and reactions to situations based on what, who is around us, what is around us, what the circumstances. So last episode, I gave an example of how if you are feeling like really frustrated or upset, you might manage that emotion in a different way, depending on whether you are in front of your classroom versus if you're at home and you have the space and time to like cry it out or journal about it or really feel and process that emotion. A lot of the times when we're out in the world, it isn't socially acceptable to burst into tears. You know, not that crying in public is bad. It should be more socially (laughs) acceptable if you ask me. That's a whole other conversation. Yeah. But But in order to kind of function well in our society, we need to be able to recognize our emotions and be able to manage them, handle them in a way that's appropriate for the situation we're in. So that's self-regulation. So obviously teaching self-regulation to our students is very useful, um, especially when we have, you know, 20 plus kids in a classroom that are all experiencing their own emotions and need to be able to regulate those emotions so that we can all continue functioning together in a classroom and moving forward with our learning and connecting and whatever else we're doing in the classroom. So um, self-regulation, a super useful tool for the classroom. But as we said, the foundation of self-regulation is self awareness. Before we can regulate our emotions, we need to first be aware of what emotions we're feeling. And that really starts with body awareness, with recognizing what are the sensations that I feel in my body when I'm feeling a particular emotion. And then those sensations that I feel become kind of like the cue that I need that says, oh, I'm feeling a big emotion right now. That's the first cue that we need before we can actually then decide, well, what strategy am I going to use to regulate this emotion so that I can behave or or react or act in an appropriate way based on what situation I'm in? So last episode, again, if you haven't listened to episode 138, we recommend going back so you can really get that foundation of how to teach self-awareness to our students. Um, But once they have built that skill of recognizing how emotions feel in their body, we're ready to move on to the steps that we're going to lay out today, which is how to practice self-regulation, because these these are skills that we need to practice. This isn't something that you can just teach and expect students to do right away. It's something that they have to practice daily so that they can really build on their understanding of how emotions feel and then how to actually implement strategies to manage those emotions. Well said. Thank you. And I think before we dive into those, those concrete steps that we talked about, um, last week or Two weeks ago, we meant to give more examples of how to teach self-awareness, but we only got as far as talking about the body scan and then talking about how we can get students to imagine that they're the sky and that their emotions are like clouds floating through the sky. So if you want to learn more about that, go to the last episode. But we can do this in many other ways using nature elements. So which are some of the others? And these are all um, in audios in Educom Classroom, often the the most favorite, um, favorited by the students. Yeah. This uh, self-awareness and emotions unit. So what are some of the others that we could do with our students? So in the self-awareness and emotions unit in Educom Classroom, which is our ready-to-use social-emotional learning and mindfulness program, 
Um, we guide students through kind of these different scenarios and ways to imagine how they aren't their emotion. They are the observer of the feelings that those emotions create in their body. And that's a really um, kind of foundational mindfulness skill um, that comes up as we practice mindfulness. Um, and this is really something that I know with my high school students, I get a lot of like, whoa, I didn't yeah. realize that you could observe your emotions. Yeah. Like that's at the end of the school year or at the end of the semester when we talk about what they learned by doing these practices daily, it really like blew their mind that they could observe their emotions rather than just be drowning in their emotions. And that's also a great way in high school to teach about observing the emotions, like watching it like you're you're watching a movie or yes. watching Netflix or something like you're watching the emotions, you're observing them. Yeah. Now in the self-awareness and emotions unit, there's the emotions are like clouds in the sky, but a second one is emotions are like fish in the ocean. So same idea, getting your students to imagine that they are the ocean and they're just washing, watching, washing, <laughs> watching their emotion fish go by. And then you can go through the different emotions, like get them to watch their happy fish. What do they look like? How are they acting? You know, what do they feel? And then getting them to go through their angry fish and watching that, et cetera, et cetera. And that's such a great discussion that you can have after the practice at all ages. So whether you're teaching kindergarten, you can talk about what would your happy or sad fish look like? What would they act like? What does it feel like? And you can do that in high school too. They, they're they not going to think that it's babyish. I think that's one thing that high school teachers are often like a little worried about or middle school teachers is like, will my students actually want to talk about this? And in my experience, they always want to talk also, about it. Yeah. Also in mine. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that instead of being worried, like, will they think this is too babyish? Just talk about it. And then yeah. if you, and then let them steer the conversation. Yeah. And like questions that we can ask are include the ones you just said, but also like, it could just be as simple as, do you agree with the emotions being like, fish in the ocean why or why not and then specific questions to how does the or comparing you know the anger fish to the happy fish um and not only what it looks like but what what does it feel like and another like other questions related since i'm in the questions i'll just keep going yeah. um a question we can ask the students afterwards is how can we recognize or observe or understand depending what level you want to go, um, on emotions in our bodies. So how do we recognize them? How do we observe them? How do we understand them? And then how can we separate ourselves from our emotions? That's a pretty deep level thinking question. Mm -hmm. And one more I just want to share is how can we accept our emotions, even if they aren't the emotions we want to be having? That's such an important question. And I think that a lot of times when we're talking about self-regulation, um, there can be maybe a misconception or like um, kind of a viewpoint that the goal is to like get rid of emotions, but that really isn't the goal. Emotions are a part of being a human mm -hmm. and we'll never be able to get rid of emotions. Um, we can ignore our emotions, which can lead to all sorts of problems later on. Um, but if we can can learn to recognize our emotions and just allow them to be there and observe what they're teaching us. That is really a great way to like have personal growth and, and self-awareness and understanding about ourselves and our motivations and our actions. Um, so to be able to teach that to students and discuss that is just really powerful. Amazing discussion questions, yeah. like really, really strong. So basically the structure of how, you know, we're talking about teaching self-regulation is we start by guiding our students through an exercise that allows them to feel the sensations in their body and kind of visualize, play with this idea of how the sensations we feel 
those are our emotions and we can just observe them rather than drowning in them. There's lots of different ways to do that. Um, a lot of different like type of visualizations we can yes, do. Yes, can we share? Yeah, a let's more. go to the next one. Um, so emotions are like the wind blowing through the trees. So basically you as the student are the tree and the emotions are the wind. So sometimes we have very strong winds that are like tornado-like. Sometimes it's just a small breeze and we can explore how it's similar to emotions. And I love that analogy because we don't deem wind as right or wrong. We Wind is just wind. It's neutral. Yeah, it's neutral. And so this helps students to understand that emotions aren't right or wrong. They're just emotions. They're just feelings that we can observe and we don't need to necessarily stop them. Um, we can just observe them. And yeah. so important. You know what else emotions are like? What else? <laughs> <laughs> They're like birds in the sky. Mm, yeah. You got your your light fluffy birds that are super happy and then you've got your crows. <laughs> vultures <laughs> different emotions <laughs> yeah and that that's a fun analogy too because you know like each of these different birds that we might imagine kind of have their own sort of personalities and emotions we can attach them to i mean there's a reason we call a group of crows a murder like it kind of has that <laughs> sort of emotional heaviness or fear or whatever. Um, so I think having kind of these almost personality traits that students can attach, like what would this bird look like as an emotion or what would this emotion bird be? Um, really interesting discussions that can can follow that and really get the creativity flowing in those discussions. I'm thinking like art as well would be mm. awesome to incorporate into this yeah. unit poems writing activities so many things ways that you can attach this learning to your regular teaching curriculum and have it just really be a rich discussion and and practice okay so we've really been focusing on how to teach for self awareness which is like super super important we can't teach self regulation without teaching self awareness first but getting into self-regulation, let's talk about the steps to teach a student to self-regulate when they are experiencing a big emotion or they're just like in a difficult place or situation. Yeah. So I think first thing that's really important to understand is that when we're teaching our students these steps, this is something that we teach them ahead of time, mm -hmm. not when they are currently in a big emotion. It's like, you know, we teach a student to swim with a life jacket first before we toss them into the ocean. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so, you know, like we want to give them these steps in this structure that they can like logically understand first so that then they can get into the practice of it and then the application of it when they're actually feeling a big emotion. So an easy way to do this to get them thinking about this logically to teach them the steps is literally just giving them scenarios where there may be big emotions or problems. Mm -hmm. So give me an example. So say, for example, you are, you walk into class and you see up on the board that there's a test today and you totally forgot about this test. You can't even remember what was on it. And you start to feel this really big sense of panic rising up in your body. Perfect. Now For what? an example. <laughs> so the first step that we're teaching them is to notice what they're feeling in their body. So that's number one. So it's that self-awareness piece again. Yes. So we tell them, okay, notice what you're feeling in your body. So what are you feeling in your body when this is happening? So when I feel like that panic rising, I feel a clenching in my stomach. I feel my heartbeat starting to beat faster, almost like water in my ears, hot on my face, um, and like a tension in my shoulders. Um, and this kind of like energetic feel where it's hard to organize my thoughts. Okay. So now you've taken the time to really notice what's going on in your body. Now, number two is to choose a strategy 
that will help you to manage what you're feeling right now, the feelings, the emotions. So what strategy might help you to feel better right in this moment? So when I'm feeling those big emotions, because it stops me from being able to think straight, um, I really like to do a breathing strategy just to like calm my body enough that my mind can come back online. So a strategy that I would do in this scenario, if I was like in a classroom, um, would just be to take five deep breaths. So I would probably do a five finger breathing strategy, whether I'm actually tracing my hand to do the five five finger breathing, or I'm just imagining myself tracing my hand. Like if I'm in front of the class, I might not as a high school student or as an adult, might not actually trace my hand, but that's what I'll be imagining. So I know that I'm taking those five deep breaths. And just like a side note to this uh, second part of the four step strategy, we got to teach those strategies. Mm -hmm. So this would be a discussion, right? When we tell them like, okay, what strategy might you use? If they don't have a toolbox of strategies yet, this is a time to start equipping them. Yes. Okay. So then we would maybe tell them, well, one strategy I like to use is, and then maybe explaining why it makes you feel better in that moment. Yeah. So really guiding them through that, depending where you're at, because I mean, some of you might be teaching those strategies, you know, daily and some of us maybe aren't there yet or whatever it is. So this is an opportunity to teach those strategies and even to practice them with the students. Yeah. And they don't have to be complicated. It can just be take three deep breaths, you know, take a walk, um, go grab a sip of water, close your eyes for a minute, put your head on your desk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it can be strategies that they already know, even if you don't have yeah, a daily mindfulness I mean, practice. I said maybe you're not doing those already, but you're yeah. for sure already doing those. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like the teaching of them in an explicit way. Yeah, exactly. Whereas for those of you that might be doing a daily mindfulness practice with your students, especially if you're using Educom Classroom, they're going to have like lots of strategies that they already know that they can use yeah. because they've been learning them daily yeah. using Educom Classroom. So. And yeah, again... Also, depending when you're what what time of the year it is, if it's September, they might not have the strategies yet. Yeah. You know, so just saying that in a general way. Yeah. So number I'm just going to repeat here. Number one is to notice what you're feeling in your body. Number two is to choose a strategy to help you manage your big emotion or feeling. And number three, this is the next one, is to notice how your body feels now that you've used the strategy. Mm -hmm. So taking that pause afterwards as well, not just before. Yeah. So So how does your body feel now? For me, once I've taken those five deep breaths, I still feel nervousness in my stomach. It's still a little bit tight because I still have this problem ahead of me. Um, I can feel that my body is still kind of like having all those sensations I had before, it's just a little bit lessened. My heart rate has slowed a little bit. I feel a little less hot and I can recognize that it's a little bit easier for me to think clearly and decide on like the next course of action. Like what can I do now? Excellent. Okay. So last step is just getting ready to respond now to right. this this difficult situation, which for you is a test you didn't know about. Yeah. So, so now that I'm in this clear headspace because I've taken those five deep breaths, I've checked in with my body, now I can take the logical next step, which would be probably to ask one of my friends in the class what's on the test. Um, and if maybe the reason I didn't know that we had a test was because I, I was sick or something like that. I wasn't at school when it was announced. Then maybe I would talk to the teacher, um, and ask if I can write it on another day, but because I'm feeling more calm, I can like take those logical steps. (laughs) That's the thing is that when your brain is in panic flight, fight or flight mode, like you just can't think of these super simple solutions. Your brain is just not there. But now that you've you've gone through the first three steps, you have the brain capacity to now like think, okay, what's next now? How do I manage this situation that's difficult right now? Yeah, exactly. So just to repeat again, because we know repetition is so important, we have to teach this explicitly to our students with scenarios. Now we use the scenario of not knowing about a test, but obviously with different grades, you would use different scenarios. Like it could be friendship problems. It could be, 
I don't know, like you forgot your lunch <laughs> yeah. or there, I mean, there's so many day to day things, right? Yeah. Like it could be anything. And it could be something that you actually ask your students to come up with a scenario yeah. that creates a big emotion. You might be surprised to, to hear their responses and, and get to know them better and be able to serve them better by knowing what are the, tr- those triggers for them at that age. Yeah. And in Educom classroom in this unit, there's like, I think there's five or six um, actual scenarios that we wrote out where the students, it's like a worksheet where they write through the four steps. Um, so those of you who are Educom classroom users, you already have that at your disposal. Um, okay. So then number one is to notice what you're feeling in your body. Number two is to choose a strategy to help you manage your emotion. Number three is to notice how your body feels now that you've used the strategy. And number four is to respond to the difficult situation or to the big emotion. Yes. And really, as we've said, like, so that's the logic. Those are the logical steps of self-regulation that we can, like, we can have those steps listed in our classroom somewhere. And we should have them listed yeah. in our classroom somewhere <laughs> so we can refer back to them yeah. and easily. We, and we have, of course, a poster that has that in Edgecom classroom. Yes. Um, but, you know, this can be something that you create or that your students create or a little, um, like a little thing that they put on their desk or it can be in lots of places to help them remember what these steps are logically. But we have to practice these steps in our body. Like you can't just tell students how to play basketball and then expect them to be able to go on the court and actually play basketball well. They have to physically practice that sport. The same is true with self-regulation. We have to physically practice the skill of becoming aware of our emotions. How does it feel in our body? Choosing a breathing strategy. So we need to have a toolkit of breathing strategies that we can select from. So that comes with practice, um, then actually feeling our body again, and then making a logical decision once our body is calm. So this, the best way to do this is to just practice it a little bit each day, practice these skills a little bit each day. It doesn't have to be like a 20 minute lesson. This can be two minutes every day. And then the awesome thing is that then you'll have this amazing base so that when your student actually is in that real life situation where they forgot about the test and it's like their brain is chaotic and they can't control themselves, you can, as the teacher, walk them through the steps, even if it takes time. And sometimes we have to go forward and then take a step back, realize, oh, we need another breathing strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, like emotions don't change in two seconds. It's not like we're like, okay, do five finger breathing. And then immediately I'm super happy. Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes we need to like, okay, we're actually not ready to respond to this situation yet. That's okay. Let's take a step back. Let's do another breathing strategy. Mm -hmm. But Now we have this concrete step-by-step tool to guide our students in those difficult moments. And what's amazing is that the more we practice these in in non-panic situations and then put them to use and guide our students when they are in those difficult situations, we actually start to see them go through these steps on their own, which is like my favorite moment ever as a teacher, like seeing them process through these four steps without our help. It takes time. But when it happens, it's just like, like, oh, I don't even, yeah. I can't even describe like, I just like the biggest sense elation. Of pride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just so yeah. proud. It's like, yeah, when you have a student that you're like looking in the corner, all of a sudden you see from the corner of your eye, someone's doing five finger breathing and you're like, oh my gosh, they're doing that on their own. Or they like come in so proud of themselves after recess and like, oh my gosh, I was just about to get in a fight with a friend, but instead I stopped and did five finger breathing. And then I was able to think clearly and I walked away from the situation instead of hitting them or pushing them or yelling at them. And they're just so proud of themselves because now they have this step-by-step process that they can use because it doesn't feel good for anyone when our emotions just boil over and we feel totally out of control and like we can't manage them. So it's really exciting for the students themselves when they learn that they can actually manage their emotions on their own. It's the most beautiful thing to see as a teacher. You ask me. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Is there anything else? I feel like we've covered like what we want to cover. Yeah. 
I think yeah. that's we're good to go. So what's the exit ticket? So exit ticket for today, I would say if you haven't already done it, sign up for Educom Classroom free trial. Go to educalm.com. That's E-D-U-C-A-L-M-E dot com. And you're going to get ready to use audios and printables that just do the work for you of teaching this to your students. And bonus allow you to learn alongside them because we didn't learn these things when we were in school right these I didn't (laughs) uh, yeah I I didn't either um you know so like most of us adults this is something that we need to learn and practice as well and as we're learning and practicing with our students then we can also model self-regulation as well so everyone benefits exactly so go to educalm.com and sign up for that free trial it's in English and in French for those of you that teach en français um and the k-12 classroom k-12 classroom need to remember to say that i always forget to mention that it's for all grades um and if you've been using the free trial for a while and you're enjoying it maybe it's time to sign up for the full membership which gives you more than a whole year worth of ready to use audios printables etc um so you know every day when you walk into your class in the morning you just have to log in and press play there's zero prep and voilà. your, yeah and your students are going to be systematically learning these skills that we're talking about over time without you having to do any of the prep for it so win win yeah <laughs> all right Thank you so much for spending your time with us here today. We truly appreciate you and all the work that you're doing in the world. If you got value from this episode, please share it with someone that you think would enjoy it too. Let's spread this information. Sharing is caring. Exactly. Empower more (laughs) teachers and students to manage their emotions and have positive mental health skills for the rest of their lives. All right. Have an awesome week. Bye. Bye.